In this video, we're gonna do a quick and dirty tutorial on how I make a thumbnail for a new video that I'm going to post. So let's get into it. Here's what we're looking at. This is a movie that I recorded of myself specifically so I can capture some still images from it to potentially use in my thumbnail. So what I normally do is I'll set up my camera, I'll kind of hit the record button, it'll be 4K, 30 frames per second, and I'll just kind of pose. So I'm actually up in my kind of loft work area, and this is a new background environment for me, so I have no idea how these thumbnails are gonna come out from a lighting perspective. But here is me just scrubbing through this video, and of course, I'm trying to like smile and look fun and you know just do all the things that you normally do in a thumbnail. And um, I think what I'll probably do, just for the sake of this demo, is I might just grab like this one, right? Because it's me looking somewhat normal, smiling, and uh, yeah, let's just grab this one. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna take a quick screenshot. So on my Mac, I'll do Shift Command 3. And you'll notice at the bottom, you'll see the little kind of like screenshot thing comes up that lets me know that I've taken a screenshot successfully. So now let me get out of this movie. And we're now just looking at my desktop. And I should have a brand new screenshot on my desktop. I don't know if that's the right one. That's it right there. So that's the screenshot that we just took. Now the next step is we're gonna go right into Canva and I'll just pull Canva up. And then what I'll normally do is this is like my previous thumbnail from my previous video. I'll just come up here and I'll duplicate this. And then now I have two versions. So this version will be my brand new thumbnail and I'm gonna delete out my old picture I'll keep the text in there because we'll probably repurpose that text. But then all I'm going to do is um, we can get rid of this for now. I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to drag it right into my Canva project. And now we get to manipulate it. So from here, I like to get rid of these black bars at the top. You might not have those, but I do because of the resolution on my screen is a little bit weird. And I'm just going to click and drag to make this a little bit bigger. And then we can, of course, move it and resize it. I'm also going to just temporarily move the text beneath the picture so that we can manipulate the picture without the text getting in the way. So that's kind of what we're working with right now. So this is a good start. I'm just going to kind of tinker a little bit. And um, maybe we'll just keep that, right? Like that'll be our base. Now, what I like to do with all my thumbnails is I like to have a background and a foreground. And the foreground is just me by myself, and the background is literally everything else in the picture. So what I like to do is make a duplicate of this, and I remove the background. So I learned a neat little trick a month or so ago. If you have your picture selected, you can just do Command-D on your Mac, and that will duplicate it. So now I've got two versions, right? And then the next step is to remove the background right here. And now I've got just me and I've got the background. So the next step is I'm gonna reduce the sides here. I'm basically gonna crop the image so that we're working with just everything that's on the canvas and not things that are working outside of the canvas. And I'm gonna do that for both my foreground and my background. And here we go. All right, now what I like to do first is I like to treat the background. So this is our foreground layer, which is just me. And this is our background layer, which is everything behind me. So I'm gonna come into edit, I'm gonna come into adjust, and I'm gonna do a vignette because I like this, you see how it kind of like darkens the corners? I kind of like adding that darkness to add some contrast between the foreground and the background. So lately I've been going pretty dark, like 85. And then that will make it so that I kind of pop out a little bit. And then I'll also, in some cases, I'll use some of these filters like Fresco to add kind of like, you know, just offset the color a little bit. Fresco has been one that I used a lot. It kind of like adds this bluish tint to it. And then I will also do a bit of a blur. So I might go like a 10. And now you can see the background is blurred slightly and I'm still in the foreground and I'm still like 
like unfazed, right? Because I haven't actually manipulated the foreground yet. Just the background has been manipulated, and you can see the coloring of my face is way different because I picked that um, because I've changed some of the settings. But now the foreground is still like the original. So now that I've got myself selected, the first thing I'll do is I'll come down to face retouch. And I'll just make it so I look a little less old. <laughs> um, this is optional. But then once I do that, I will come to adjust. And oftentimes I will sit here for a little bit and kind of tinker with some of the color settings. So you can adjust the temperature, right? And you can see how I'm turning like orange. You obviously do not want to overdo it when you're playing with some of these settings. So it just depends on how the lighting is, the white balance, the exposure, all of that stuff on the on the original source file. You might need to brighten it. You might need to darken it. It just depends on how the picture came out. I'll normally, you know, just tinker with this for a little bit until I get it quite right. Um, and then from there, like, you know, we're kind of off. So this might, this might be the, the longest part where it takes you some time to get the coloring correctly. I actually made this thumbnail just before I started recording this tutorial. This one I might end up using, but I actually kind of dialed in. You can see when I click on this, you can see all the different settings that I've played with to get this to look this way. So what you can do is if you're working with multiple options for your thumbnail that you want to kind of just test out, you can, if you get the colors dialed in on one, you can right click, do copy style, and then you can come down to this next one that I don't have the colors dialed in on, and you can just click on it and it'll apply all of those color settings. So now this one and this one have the exact same color settings. So hopefully that's not too confusing, but that's just a quick way of applying settings across multiple images. I also learned that from someone in the comments. I forget who you are, but thank you very much because that saves me so much time. Um, so now we've got our background treated, our foreground is treated, and we wanna get our text back. So we'll come back to position and we can just drag these down to the bottom layers. And it really just depends on what our caption will be. I think for this video, it's going to be, the title is going to be um, how this one free tool got me a viral video. And so I kind of want to say something like, um, it shouldn't be free. So maybe we'll just carry this over. So we'll do it shouldn't, and then we'll kind of just drag it out so it fits all on one line. And we'll do be free. So I'm really just borrowing the same caption from the one I had already created earlier. But this one might actually be a better option. So we might stick with this. So I'm just going to shorten these things up so that I'm not uh, it's not covering my face. And then what I like to do is just kind of line things up a little bit. Sometimes I just eyeball it, but sometimes I get really um, precise about it. And yeah, it's pretty good right there. I like the spacing. I like the size differential. So what I can do now, because I don't want it covering my face, I can come back here, go to position, and then I can drag these beneath me. So they're sort of behind me, right? So just slightly behind me. And, um, you know, that might be it, right? I mean, we can make them a little bit smaller so they're not completely covered. Like something like that. Or we can even move it down. Now, that could be a finished thumbnail, potentially, right? We might want to fine-tune some of the colors in here. Um, I kind of like this one because I'm a little bit closer to the camera. And I... I my facial expression is a little bit different, but um, all that to say, you know, you can take multiple still images from the one source video file of you posing and you can just play around. And of course you can A-B test in YouTube studio. So you can put in multiple thumbnails. You can change the expressions on your face. You can make the caption different. You can try dramatically different thumbnails. I tend to stick with like the same style thumbnails, whether that's good or not um, is yet to be decided. But that's pretty much it. This is just a quick tutorial on how I do my thumbnails. So for anyone who's new and hasn't really dived into the world of thumbnail design, this is a very simple way of doing them. Of course, you can make them as elaborate as you want. I 
prefer simplicity. And so I uh, just wanted to share this. Hopefully this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you guys soon.